Um, our first speaker is Tim Prefit, and he's the founder and CEO of Two Canoe Software. He started the company in 2012 in Naperville, Illinois, after leaving Apple. He is the creator of WinClone, Boot Runner, something that I use all the time, a line of iBeacons, MDS, and a bunch of solutions around PKI, including certificate request, smart card utility, signing manager, and more. He came to Calgary to speak at our last Mac deployment conference in 2019. On the lighter side, Tim's favorite Apple device is the SE30 with the Radius graphics card and an external monitor. This computer and card was one of the hottest and coolest computers of its time on the market. I know because I had one as well and I had a lot of fun. In fact, I had a monster hard external hard drive on it, a whole 120 megabytes. So with that, I will turn it over to Tim. Um, I'm doing the new keynote uh, display in window, which is I've not done before, which is pretty exciting. So um, I want to thank everybody for having me today uh, to this conference. It's unfortunate I couldn't go back up to Calgary. Um, I do have my Calgary hat that I got last time behind my iMac behind me. Um, and I enjoyed my time there, but I'm glad to be participating in this, this conference. Um, so the journey for uh, deploying uh, Apple Silicon Macs has been kind of a long one. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it started when they were released and you really could only run the, uh, you can only really restore Apple Silicon using Apple Configurator 2. And so um, I was assured by folks that I talked to that things they become more deployable. It wasn't so much for MDS's sake, but the fact that deploying Macs uh, at scale is kind of what a lot of schools do and a lot of organizations do. And being able to do that in a way that makes sense for a lot of folks um, is important. So um, what we're here now in the beginning of June in uh, 2021, um, we have a great way to be able to mass deploy Apple Silicon. And that's what I want to talk about today is not just with MDS, but how MDS can augment your MDM and deployment, deploy enrollment system. So well, let's jump in. I have about a half an hour to speak and then we'll have time for some questions afterwards. Um, so hopefully uh, we can do that. So for folks that, that don't know, MDS uh, used to stand for Mac Deploy Stick, but because we did a double backronym, we now call it Mac Deploy Server. And this is uh, it's really turned into, morphed into all the utilities, open source utilities, as well as the functionality for workflows packed into this, this one macOS app. Um, and this allows you to augment or use the built-in MDM server um, to be able to quickly deploy Macs. And that's really the whole idea behind it is how can we deploy Macs as fast as possible? And by fast, and you'll see more as I get, get going, is that Fast really means to minimize the amount of time the tech or the person deploying it is in front of the machine. Um, Apple changed really the philosophy of deploying Macs a couple of years ago when they deprecated NetBoot and ASR. I guess deprecated is too nice a word. They got rid of those types of technologies. Um, so really, uh, it's important to use the macOS installer. So everything's surrounding that. So what we really want to do is minimize the amount of time they take to in front of the machine. So we got hit with this curveball. We got rid of ASR. We got got rid of uh, um, NetBoot. ASR is still there, but it's not really recommended to do it. And NetBoot is definitely and most thoroughly gone. Um, we we we're, were throwing not just the two T twos, but now the Apple Silicon Macs to be able to deploy them. And um, deploying them is slightly different, but um, MDS now supports basically the same way from the user's perspective or from the admin's perspective of deploying Macs that we did with Intel Macs. Uh, they are a little bit faster with the M1 because uh, the installer sense seems to run a little bit faster. Maybe the machine's a little bit faster, but basically the workflows are unchanged the way you set them up. Um, but underneath things are different and I'll go through that a bit today. So I wanna start off with a demo. So this is what it looks like when you're deploying an M1 Mac or an Apple Silicon Mac. So you take it out of the box and you a fix a property tag because we all fix property tags. Um, and then you hold down the power button um, till you go into what's called one true recovery. And at that point, the machine starts up and let me start up this demo. 
Um, and just like you would in, in MDS3, you go up to the terminal menu and I'll open up terminal, make it a little bit larger so you can see. Um, and then we run the workflow runner. And the workflow runner is brand new in MDS4. It's now called MDS Deploy. Um, before it was based on Imager, and now it's based on uh, an app that runs natively. So this comes up, um, you can select the workflow and what drive you want to go to, and then you hit uh, run. And what it does there is it copies the installer to the target drive. And so uh, if that doesn't technically have to be done, but one of the nice things is if you're doing this off of a USB stick or a flash drive, once that's copied, all the resources are local. You can just unplug that and go on to the next one. Um, so once the installer gets copied over, it's going to copy over the um, uh, packages that are going to be installed that includes creating users, being able to uh, run scripts, uh, do settings, those kind of things. Once that's done, it kicks off the Mac OS installer and uh, disconnects the drive so you can unplug it. And then you do four clicks to kick off the installer. And so that takes less than two minutes. Um, but the nice thing about this is not just we're not just installing the OS but we're installing the OS and at first boot, it's gonna install those packages and completely set up the machine. Um, if, you're, uh, if you have deployment enrollment, as well as uh, MDM, at that point, it can use those same things. You can do auto advance with Big Sur, which automatically enrolls you uh, or automatically with Setup Assistant and D device enrollment, which allows you to uh, automatically enroll your devices or the user when they get them can, can click through that. So that doesn't change it, but what it means is that you have a fully configured Mac um, when they start using it, right? So you don't have to wait for all the ins installation, VPN, software updates to happen. When the person opens up the laptop, connects it to Wi-Fi, they log in, they're ready to go. So what does this workflow setup look like? And so this is the main interface in MDS. That other one, that other demo that I showed was just the target machine once I unboxed it. So that one, once it's done, it runs for about 20 minutes, can then be shut down and sent out to the user or delivered to the user to fully figure, configure the machine. And I just want to walk you through how you would actually set up that workflow just briefly. Um, so I have the main interface here, and I'll go and I'll actually look at the workflow. You can give it a name, a description, so you can choose it, and you can now limit it by the models. Um, you can choose which OS installer you want, whether you want to erase and install it or maybe use the existing OS that's on the machine. You select your packages, scripts um, that you want to be able to install on it. And here I'll, I'll move Photoshop in and select it because it's a large installer. You want to get that installed ahead of time. I can create an admin user. Uh, it can be a normal user. It can be a hidden user as well. You can give them an SSH key. You can do a, get, put a picture there if you want to. They have those users all pre-created. Um, you can have it join Wi-Fi. You can have it set the computer name. Um, skip the setup assistant. Enable SSH. All those different features allow you to have a fully configured machine. And one nice thing is that you can have custom variables as well. So you can run your own scripts with different information the tech enters. Um, we have a full featured MDM based on micro MDM. Um, you can configure automatons, which we'll talk a little bit more uh, later. Um, we'll also, you also can create a Mac OS installer external drive right inside MDS using the download Mac OS feature, which allows you to download the disk image of the Mac OS installer. So gone are the days of having to search around the Apple site to find that secret link that allows you to download the installer. You can just go in here and select which installer you want. And it's not just the production ones. You can easily, if you're part of the Apple seed or um, public beta, you'll see those as well. So you can search any of the different catalogs to download those. And it puts into a disk image so you can use those inside of, a, uh, inside of uh, the workflows on MDS. So um, it's kind of full feature. The idea is bringing all these tools together so you can have all of the different assets you need um, to deploy these Macs. So let, let's, let me kind of recap what the process was um, to do this with an M1. So to get into this, what they're calling one true recovery, um, you boot to recovery by holding down the power key for about five seconds. Um, once that happens, you see little options and you select that and you go into uh, to the recovery environment. You have to run a single uh, command, slash volume, slash MDS, slash run, which allows you to kick off the workflow. Um, at that point, the work well, workflow may prompt you to say, do you want to erase the Mac? Um, it'll actually launch 
uh, with the new Apple Silicon Max, you can't just erase it in disk utility. You can't just do disk utility erase volume. That doesn't work. You have to completely do what's called erase Mac, which preps the machine for, it's like it's brand new out of the box. So what MDS will do is it will launch uh, disk utility and tell you to erase the volume group, which will prompt the machine to erase the entire machine or do what's called erase Mac. If you're not erasing the Mac, it'll just go ahead and run the, uh, the installer like I showed, or copy the installer over packages, scripts, settings, and a launch daemon goes to the target drive. And then the installer will launch up, you click through it, and it starts to install, and then the tech's done, they can walk away. That whole process, including launch, or including erasing the Mac, takes about four minutes. So um, you can spend about four minutes, and this is all manual. We haven't gotten into the optimizations yet, but our baseline is about four minutes. So there are some differences. If you've done use MDS or even just deployed Intel Macs, um, you may have used some of these utilities, and there's some differences. Uh, the first big difference is MDS was really based on the start OS install command running in recovery, which is basically the command line version of the installer. That's not available anymore in Apple Silicon. If you run it, it tells you you can't use it any. You can't, it's not available in Apple Silicon. So you have to run the GUI installer. Um, so that's, that, that's gone. You can run it in Mac OS um, and send like an MDM command to erase the drive using start OS install, but that requires a username and password that's known, which is, can be used in some circumstances. Um, as I mentioned before, erasing the volume is not enough. You can't just go in and erase the, uh, erase the volume. You can't even just uh, remove the uh, container from APFS. You have to erase Mac, which does a reset of the machine, requires the Mac to be reactivated at that point to completely erase it. Um, and before we used to, way back in the day, before the T2s and SIP, um, you used to be able to use the bless command to say, oh, I want to boot into recovery. Um, in fact, there was a little utility called Recovery Selector that I had that would set an NVRAM that allow you to boot to recovery. So those are gone now. You can't, in Apple Silicon, you have to hold the power button down to get into this one true recovery um, mode to do this. So that's, that's kind of a hard requirement to get uh, into that. So that automation to um, get into recovery is not there anymore. Um, so those are kind of the limitations, and uh, but we've managed to kind of use this new system to be able to start deploying Apple Silicon at scale. Um, so let's talk about how you want to deploy Apple Silicon. And this is it really, we're going to compare between using uh, an MDM and deployment enrollment, and then uh, supplementing that with MDS, because really everything around deployment is uh, uses MDM. You don't have to use it with it, but most environments do have that. And really what using MDS does is allows you to get to a fully set up machine a lot faster. And that's really what the goal is. So uh, kind of the idea is that what is a machine that's ready to be used? Does it mean when you buy it? Does it mean when IT puts a property sticker on it once they get it set up or if it's delivered directly to the user, when the user turns it on or when it's ready to go? And I define it as it's when it's ready to go. So you have a fully configured usable Mac. So you turn it on, you connect it to Wi-Fi, you log in, it's at the correct OS, you have the software that's required, all the settings and management's installed and the user accounts so they can log in. So that's a fully configured Mac. And so um, that's kind of how long does it take to get to that point? Because it's, for me, it's not so much as when FedEx says it's delivered on your front porch, that's not a fully configured machine. It's not when the teacher first turns it on, it's when is they, can, they, can they start using it. So there's two scenarios that we want to talk about. First one is out of box deployment. So you get a brand new Mac, you unpack it up. The second one is when you want to redeploy something that you want to take an Apple Silicon and, and give it to somebody else after they've used it. Um, so let's talk about the, before we augment it with uh, MDS. So if you have DEP and MDM, and I know that DEP is not the correct term anymore, but I've, it's a lot shorter than saying Apple School, Man Max enrolled at Apple School Manager and Apple Business Manager. So when I think DEP, <laughs> just think that other long sentence um, and MDM only. So most likely it's gonna be delivered and the user's gonna be starting it up. So it's, they're gonna use the install OS. They're gonna start it up. The machine gets enrolled in enrollment and uh, or in DEP. Um, and they're using the, the OS that's on the machine. So it enrolls in MDM with minimal user interaction 
Uh, most likely they'll join the Wi-Fi, they'll opt into remote management. And so they're now enrolled. So then the, the MDM agent is installed, then software and settings start to get installed, right? And then the Mac OS is updated via software update. That can be done in the background to like make sure that they're at the correct version. And that requires MDM, enroll, the Mac enrolled and device enrollment, either through Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager. Um, the network, which is usually the teachers, this, the, the, the person's home network, the Starbucks where they went to when they got the machine, and a bunch of time, right? They, the, when they turn the machine on, it takes a while for those applications to get installed. If you're just installing Chrome, it'll be really fast. The software updates, I don't know if anybody noticed, but 11.4, it was about 11 or 12 gigs, right? And that's enough to clog, clog the uh, pipes in any Starbucks. Um, but the huge benefit is that IT doesn't have to do anything, right? So they've taken this and they've offloaded not just not just that time, but also the network, right? Which is kind of great for them because they don't really have to do anything besides we'll have the people, that, the factory can put the property tag on it. It's shipped down directly to the user. But there's a big drawback. The user has to wait for the Mac to finish setting up. Like I've gone through this process with some companies and it, it does take a little bit of time for this to set up. And a little bit can mean a lot depending on what kind of environment you're in. So let's add an MDS to this mix and how can we make it faster and better? So um, it, the uh, MDS can be set up to wipe the machine. If you're using the OS that's built on it, you don't have to wipe it, but I, most people wipe it because it means that you don't have to care what OS is on there. And so if it comes with 11.3.1 and you want it to be 11.4, it's just, it's wiped and erased. So that's perfect. Um, you can optimize the, a little bit more if you know, like you ordered it from the factory and you said you only want the freshest Macs with 11.4 already in it. You don't have to do that step. Um, then the packages install the required software, like we showed. Um, It'll get enrolled in MDM with device enrollment, or the user can manually enroll. Um, and that's it, right? So it leverages all that stuff we had before, but all of the software has been installed already. But there, the, it requires the tech to get it ahead of time, right? Somebody has to run this MDM workflow. And it also requires MDM and the device enrollment. So the benefit is that person that gets it can go to a Starbucks, they can go turn it on, that teacher can run their desk and they open it up, and it's got all the software that's installed. So that's uh, perfect. Um, and, but the drawback is the tech needs to touch it ahead of time. And so um, it depends on how you're deploying Mac to be able to do that and if, how you want the, that state to be delivered to the user. And then let's talk about redeployment. So now the person's had it for a couple of years. I know Apple Silicon hasn't been out there for a while, but we, they will be, it'll come fast enough. Um, and so let's talk about DEP and MDM once you have a machine that's you want to redo it. So you have to reset it. So uh, you know that if you have a machine that's coming back from a user, you can't trust to give it to another machine until it's wiped, right? So you got to use Apple Configurator 2, which requires a, a Mac and a, a USB-C cable. Um, so it's really kind of a one-to-one -to, -one to kick off. It is actually very fast, about eight minutes to uh, restore it using Apple Configurator 2, assuming you've already downloaded the OS. You can also put a recovery and do a race Mac and reinstall. Right, so that takes um, about 15 minutes to do that. And you can also send the start OS L command to a booted Mac, but that requires you to know an admin account and a secure token and the Mac to be set up uh, and on a network somewhere to be able to do it. Um, so that's getting it back to that state to be redone again um, with DEP and MDM requires some planning ahead of time and it doesn't really work well for Machines are just sent back to IT and they have to set up again and wipe them. But then let's look at what happens when you have the DEP and MDM and MDS. It's exactly the same. There's no change to what it is because you run the workflow, it wipes the drive, installs the OS again, and it's all set up for the next person. So literally you don't have to do any of this prepping it for the next install, right? To get it ready. And then the person has to wait for the software to install. So it's it's kind of a uh, um, easing, moving the time to the beginning of the workflow, um, as well as, uh, as well as, um, well, it's easing the time. Uh, I forget what I was gonna say, but anyways, onwards. Um, so let's look at times, the actual times to do this. So, um, so we do the erase and install with uh, MDS. It takes about four minutes of interactive time, two minutes to 
kick off the work for the first time, it erases it, that takes about a minute, and then you got a minute for it to clear off the drive and go back into it. And then the installer and the OS chunks away for about 18 minutes. So you have about 22 minutes of total time. If you're using the existing OS, which means you don't have to install the OS, it's a lot faster. You can get it down to about three minutes, which is, which is great. Um, but again, I care mostly about that top line. Interactive time is the time the tech spends in front of it, right? They're not off doing other things, right? Or going on to another machine. Um, so then let's look at what you do is the MDM setup times. And I remind you that the idea of setup means it's completely set up, usable machine can log in, VPN in, the software update has been updated. So the, set, the user has to go through the setup assistant, which means they create the user account, they join a Wi-Fi, they opt into um, remote management, and then the agent gets installed. And that could be fast. It can be really slow too, depending on what your pipe is. And it might, if an application fails, it might be retried and it might have to be kicked off again with a ticket. Then the OS has to be updated. And so I don't know how your pipes are. I have a pretty good pipe at home, but 11 gigs is 11 gigs. That's going to take a while. Um, so that can take a while. You can contend that you don't have to have the OS updated, but I'll say as a good security professional, you should want to have the update the OS updated. So when you add in one to a lot plus one to a lot, I don't know how long it takes, right? It's not instantaneous. And as IT, you don't know that it's ready to go when they first get it. So that's, that's really, if it doesn't matter to you how, how long it takes the person to set up or you know they have good pipes or you're gonna let it run, you're gonna go ahead of time, that's fine. You can just use those. But front loading everything with MDS and having it in a known state reduces the amount of tech time and it reduces the amount of user time being able to set up all that stuff. So I said it takes four minutes, right, to do this. And that's just, just not acceptable to me, four minutes is way too long because that means that somebody has to wait and they have to step through the uh, array steps, reboot, step through the installer, and then they walk away. And who has four minutes, right? Four minutes is a lot of time, especially when you add it, multiply it times 5,000 max, that's really difficult, or it's a lot of time. So we updated the MDS automaton, and I have one here. Um, I'm very uh, proud of this little device. It's, think of it as a little robot, it looks like a flash drive, but it's not. It's a little robot inside, a robot with a little teeny keyboard that only this robot can use with a, a 3D, employ, uh, 3D uh, printed case as well as a USB cable. And so the process for doing this now of setting up an M1 Mac is you press the hole on the power button. Because remember I said you can't get around that. Then you plug this in. You're done. That's the amount of time it takes. Then you move on to the next Mac. And what this does is this will walk through all the different steps that I showed that you mainly walked through before, which is erasing the Mac, uh, launching, the or launching the installer and stepping through the installer. So you literally don't have to do anything else. So the question is, how long does this take? Like, Tim, how long do, how long do I, you said four minutes, are you gonna take half of it off? It's gonna take two minutes? It's gonna take a single minute? Like, that's insane. I can't do it in one minute. This takes seven seconds like five seconds to turn it on. And if you're really slow, two seconds to plug this in because you're gonna plug it in the wrong way and then the wrong way and then the correct way, and then you'll be, then you'll be done. So you can set up an Apple Silicon Mac in seven seconds, right? Literally the time it takes to plug this in and power it on. So it does this by automating the keystrokes and you can't just blindly automate keystrokes. So this is actually has a serial communication in it that talks with the MDS deploy. So depending on when it boots up, it says, hey, we're this point in the process. And it says, go off and erase it. And then it comes back and it says, hey, the drive's erased. Okay, I'm a lot to installer. Robot, go through and go through the installer. So there's a lot more back and forth that this communicates with. So we're very excited about this. It is the exact same automaton as you have for the Intel version. So you can, um, you can flash the same ones you have. Um, and we'll talk about if you don't have these already. If four minutes is fine, if one minute to infinity is fine, if four minutes is fine, but seven seconds, think about seven seconds. And it, it runs the terminal and communicates or kicks off the workflow when it needs to. And all that stuff is done through these keystrokes. And so we did a lot of work to fine tune that. So let me put an asterisk on the seven seconds because you might be like, Tim, that's a disingenuous. It's not set up in seven seconds. So there's 18 minutes about that it's unattended running. That doesn't count, right? That's that's time that you could be 
setting up more Macs and bringing more value to your organization, right? Instead of clicking through things. And one of the nice things is once you've done one machine, it copies the installer over and this gets ready in a couple of minutes, you can unplug this and move it on to like the fifth or sixth one. So you can start cascading it. And really the amount of time it takes is your is uh, the network bandwidth or the uh, table space or number of outlets you have, right? You have to buy, we don't sell power supplies, but you can buy them. At, can't buy them at Fry's anymore because it's closed down. Go to Micro Center and buy them. So that's, that's, um, that's MDS uh, uh, Apple Silicon, but there's there's a whole lot more to uh, there's a whole lot more to Apple Silicon uh, Max or to MDS four. So we have all the things we had in MDS three, where we can do monkey um, uh, create the automaton, remote logging, like a huge amount of features. We've added in some new stuff on, and not just the Apple Silicon stuff, but we can customize it more to where you can really customize your organization, and optimize what you want to be able to do. So um, it's uh, this presentation is just the uh, Apple Silicon portion of it, which is kind of exciting and it's free. Right, it's an open source project. You can go down. It's not just open source at the top, right? If you go this this automaton, the uh, Arduino that's in size and itsy bitsy, which is open source hardware from Adafruit, you can go out and buy it from them. Uh, I don't think the USB cable is open source, but that's not really I'm not here nor there. Um, the uh, the actual enclosure is a 3D case that I put out on Thingverse. So if you have any 3D printers, you can print it. Um, so if you want to do it all yourself, you can do it for free. If you want to go a little bit faster and you want to buy these fully configured, um, you can get them from us. They're about twenty dollars if you have a support contract, which is about the cost of the components. Um, and if you want to give us some money to go faster, we do consulting and support and uh, the pre-built hardware that we talked about. The support is actually uh, to support the project as well to keep it going, kind of thing. So um, MDS is really uh, about the community. So join us. Please, um, if you want to know more about um, MDS, go to our product page at twocanoes.com slash MDS. We post pretty much nightly builds on our Bitbucket Git repository. Um, and I love doing these videos. So all the features are done, are, are kind of highlighted as we do them on YouTube. Um, so there's a, a nice tranche of videos that you can see. And the MDS Slack, uh, is very active with folks, especially now that we're kind of getting into uh, deployment season. Um, and if you want to just contact me directly, hit, a, hit me up at info at twocanoes.com. And if you want to follow me, I don't just talk about automatons. I also talk about air tags and renovating Model A's on my Twitter feed. So please follow me there if you're interested in, in, a, in a broader view of Tim Perfect. So that's you know, Apple Silicon. Let's go, let's go to the gallery and see if there's any questions. Okay, um, we have a couple of questions that were posted in the Q and A. Um, the first one is: I don't see Chrome OS listed in automatons anymore. Has that feature been discontinued? Uh, yes, we took that out because of the amount of updates that required uh, for the different versions of Chrome OS and the number of people using it. It was very few people were using it. We only had like a couple of people using it and it wasn't working that great because it didn't match for their Chrome OS. So we did remove that in MDS4. Okay. We have uh, another question, which is where does File Vault fall within the workflow? Right. So File Vault is, especially on Apple Silicon, is a really interesting. Oh, let me stop sharing so you can see my wonderful face. There we go. Um, so File Vault uh, is similar to the um, Erase Max. You have to erase it. You don't. You don't have to erase it if you know the username and password. But in terms of the MDS workflow, the automaton you can set to say this is a file vaulted machine. And what it does instead of launching the workflow and then detecting if the drive needs to be erased. It just says, go ahead and erase the drive. So if you have a machine, if you have a bunch of machines that you know are all file vaulted, you can automate that. If you're not automating it, you just boot up to it, choose erase Mac, reboot, and you're at that same place that you're ready to go. So we have that completely automated as well. It's actually a little bit faster because you don't have to bounce off the workflow runner to detect if you want to erase the drive. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm a little robot and I'm going to go ahead and zap your Mac. 
which you think is dangerous, but it's only if you pull the power button down and plug in the MDS and if you uh, automaton. If you do that, you kind of deserve to have a wipe drive. Well, that's not fair. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you're kind of, kind of terrible. Okay. Um, is setting up Silicon M1 pretty much the same on MDS as Intel? Uh, in terms of what the tech does, yes. It'll look a little bit different on the screen, but in terms of setting up the workflows, uh, I went through, we went through many iterations and one of them was we thought we we're going to have to have the user account and look it up with a script and all that kind of stuff. So the UI changed a whole bunch. And mm -hmm. then, and after it all boiled down, I went back in, I ripped all that out. It looks pretty much the same um, that you had before. And so it's, it's nice. And we made sure that the same workflows that run on Apple Silicon will run on Intel. Um, so it, like erasing the drive is very different, right? It's use disk util erase uh, erase disk, or maybe it's remove volume, remove container on Intel, but on Apple Silicon, it's erase Mac. But the user just selects, or the admin just selects, I want to erase the disk, and the the workflow takes care of all that stuff. So I was actually surprised. I went to do like the the for this presentation, I was like, say the differences in the UI between the two, there just wasn't that many, but a ton of differences underneath. Okay. Um... What is the current cost of the MDS for? It's free. It's free, but you can support you can support the uh, efforts by buying support or buying the hardware. Uh, the current support contracts are either five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars, mainly depending on the size of your organization. So, if you have uh, uh, tranches of money hanging around, you can do that. If you don't, your education customer that wants to be more value conscious or if you want to do it all yourself. But I like, I like, uh, I like doing this stuff. So a lot of it is just the uh, fun stuff we do in the Slack channel to be able to hack uh, automatons to automate this deployments. And one of the big things is just how fast can we get this process? I think seven seconds is pretty good. Seven seconds isn't bad. I actually looked it up. There's a lot of different references to seven seconds. There's a Netflix show, there's a punk band. Uh, there's another there's a movie called Seven Seconds. And now we can add to that MDS deployment Apple Silicon. Okay. Question out of Slack. Um, how is the software any different than using Mac Provisioner and DEP enrollment? Uh, I'm not sure about Mac Provisioner, but I am really excited to see people in the, it's probably better to ask in the Slack channel how folks are seeing it differently. I'm kind of laser focused on making sure that MDS is the best product it possibly can be, not paying much attention to the other things. So we really do want it to work well with MDM. So it's been tested with Mosul and uh, Jamf and all the different kind of common MDMs. Um, but it does uh, allow you to, well, I guess maybe that what our focus is really on optimizing that time up front. Right. I don't know if Mac Provisioner Last I knew, Mac Provisioner was it didn't work in Catalina. I don't know if it works on Big Sur. I haven't paid much attention. Okay. Um, do you have any tips for dealing with activation lock and MDS? We've inadvertently locked ourselves out more than a few times. Um, activation lock. Oh, you mean with the MDM feature? I, I don't. Yeah, we'll have to take that one offline, I guess. But. Okay. Yeah, we're not we're not about locking you out of your Macs. We are more about opening it up and making it easier. Okay. Um... Oh, so activation lock. You're not talking about locking the machine when it's lost. This is locking the machine at activation. This I have no idea. Have a network. Don't use captive portals. <laughs> yes, I know you have no control over your captive portals, but still, don't use them. Do we need to have one MDS drive for each Intel and Silicon, or can we use uh, the same drive for both? Well, I just found out recently that Jeff Bezos has a small yacht to take care of the large yacht. So in order for me to get that large yacht, I'm going to need everyone to buy more MDS automatons. But no, you can use, you can use uh, the same automaton, but you can't use it interchangeably, like in the moment you have to go into settings and change it. So you do have to have ones for the machine. And that's true of FileVault ones as well. 
So if you have like a disparate amount of machines, you have to have one automaton for each style, whether it's file vaulted Apple Silicon, non-file vaulted Apple Silicon, and Intel. Um, but most likely that's, I don't think there's going to be those. You could, I could put a switch on it, which I would love to do, but I uh, haven't really any requests for that. So let me know if you want that. Put a, I'll put like a big toggle switch on it. Maybe not a big one. You know, you know what I, want. I think you should put the old ones that you see in the cartoons where it's slam it down, up and down. Ooh, it's got to be three positions. So you have down and then off and then up. That's then right. It's like when it's alive. That's right. Um, at what point can we unplug the automaton? Um, so uh, you, on Intel, once the, uh, well, let's see. Once the first reboot happens and you see the Apple logo come up, you just pull out the automaton. The, um, uh, for Apple Silicon, after it's done, you'll see in the bottom, it says copy installer. And then it, it it'll launch the installer. You can pull it out then. Or if you just want consistency at the first reboot on any platform, the first time it reboots is you can unplug it. And that's true with the thumb drive. If you're using a thumb, oh, sorry, a USB flash drive and a uh, the automaton, um, you can unplug it at that point. Most people do not use the USB flash drive after they've used it for a while because it becomes more efficient to use a, a disk, minute, disk image mounted off of HTTP. So if you're a local web server, which MDS includes or has a front end to, um, you don't have to plug in any USB drive for the resources. It's a little bit slower, but most people that are doing this have a fast ethernet that they plug into these machines anyways. Um, and it's not going off to the cloud to grab it or going to Apple for the OS installer. It's going locally, so it can be really fast. So uh, you can unplug all that stuff right as soon as it... Um, uh, uh, that first reboot, which is about two minutes. Okay. So that means that you do the first one, seven seconds, you unpack, put the property tag in the next one, you plug the stuff in, do the next thing, next thing. And what we found, at least with Intel, and if anybody wants to buy me like 10 Apple Silicons, I'll do this testing for them. Um, but the feedback that we've gotten is it takes about, by the time you get to the fifth machine, the first one you can hear it chime, and you can pull the stuff out and go on to the sixth one. But there's no there's no legal reason you can't buy one automaton per Mac. This is it's not it's allowed. Um, is there a USB C option for the cable or only a micro B and USB A? Uh, yes, you, USB Type C. When you buy from us, so we thought about this. So this is like, what cable do you want to do? Um, and you can get different cables for it. If you're gonna buy a bunch of them, we can. Customize the cable if you want. People tend to buy the little dongle adapters that go onto it. They're really cheap now. They're like 99 cents versus the cables. I mean, it just hasn't been worth it. It's really nice to have that flexibility. Um, so yeah, right now it's just the USB-A just because it's, it's uh, you don't need a big dongle. You get the little ones that convert it. It's not really worth it. But if you buy a bunch of them, we can customize the cables for you. Or it's open source. You do it yourself. Okay. Well, I think we've exhausted all our questions. I'd like to thank you, Tim, for a really interesting and cool presentation. Um, I think we got one more very pressing question. Oh, go ahead. What is it? Where is it? And, and it's from someone who was at the last Mac deployment conference, Per Olofsson. Ah. What is your favorite Canadian coffee franchiser? <laughs> My favorite Canadian coffee franchise? Yeah. Monica, can you help me out here? What's my favorite one? Oh. It would be Tim Hortons. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean donuts and coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't understand. I didn't know. Can you get coffee at Tim Hortons? Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> double, double. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but I am looking forward to coming back in a year or two, depending on when the next conference is, if you'll have me. Oh, we got one last question here. Our techs have consist consistently had issues building Macs where they can get them to a state requiring internet recovery. Can MDS and Automaton help? 
So on Intel, you can set the uh, keyboard shortcut to either boot to recovery, internet recovery, or oldest version that came with the Mac recovery. Um, I myself find that to be less optimal for known speed times. And so every, every USB drive we have here has a Catalina and a Big Sur partition on it. And you get a Mac where it's just not booting up into recovery because it doesn't have recovery because whatever reason, sometimes it's somebody did something weird with their Mac, the Play Studio and put it down, whatever. It's just not worth it. You boot it externally, you go into that recovery environment, you just do it. And that's really a one-off type thing. Um, but like I said, you can boot into internet recovery with the automaton, it'll hold the key down, but it's literally a little robot holding the command option R for you. So if it doesn't work with command option R with, the little with you, it's not gonna work for the little robot. But yeah, we, we've done that same thing. And the bigger issue is going backwards. Like if people's like, oh, I got all these big sure machines, I wanna go back to Catalina. And Apple doesn't, the installers I don't think are, are not always well behaved or don't always work going backwards. Um, so we recommend booting from the OS that's older or the same as the OS you're booting from. So it's more common, or at least from our testing is that if you wanna, if you want to go from Big Sur to Catalina, just boot up in Catalina. And how do you do that? Well. External drive is the easiest way to do that. Okay. Thank you very much again, Tim. Thank you. Oh, I, I didn't share my screen. Okay. I'm good. Thank you, everybody. And please, please visit, join the Slack channel. <laughs>